Very long queue, guys. This is the longest queue I've ever seen in my life. I stood. And it even gets longer and longer and longer. Some food here. Ah, it's cookies and juice and candies. And coffee. Ah, there are seven children on the playground. Eight with Darina. Including three of mine and five more children playing on the playground. But I have a feeling that all of them are my children. What I want to say is that it is one month of the war. It started just on the 24th of February, when in the morning, a phone call woke me up and my friend told me Olenka Pachalosa. What means Olena it started. The voice was very frightened and then I heard explosions. And that was like unbelievable. It's still unbelievable that we are in this in this war. This is Olena Ganesh. She is a Ukrainian mother of three. Her youngest just turned five months old, and she's living in a bomb shelter with her children in Kyiv while her husband fights with the Ukrainian Territorial Defense Unit. She's been documenting her experience on social media, giving the world a firsthand look at living in a war-torn country, showing long lines for food, hearing loud explosions and bombings all around them. And Olena joins us now. Now, uh, Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. It's great to see you again it's great to see uh, your beautiful baby and and I understand you've been in this apartment building uh, taking shelter from the bombings describe your day-to-day -day life for us well first of all we get up in the morning with a feeling uh, like thank you the armed forces of Ukraine and thanks to God that we basically woke up and we had another day and we are alive and then uh, you know just a daily routine we have to brush our teeth, we have to have breakfast, uh, then we have to go outside. And this is a challenge because very often there is a siren on, like alarm, and uh, there is a risk of uh, bomb shelling from the, like with the Russian rockets. Uh, but yes, we have to be strong and we go outside because we need to go to the supermarket and find some food. Uh, for this, you need to stand usually in long queue to buy the food. Uh, then we try to go home. We live on the eighth floor in our apartment. Uh, for me, it's very challenging because I'm very much afraid to go upstairs, honestly. You know, when uh, these rockets, missiles, when they hit apartment blocks in Kiev or other cities, usually, well, people who were inside, they die or get wounded severely. And you never know when exactly and which exactly building will be hit. So it's like a lottery, you know, when you go there. Um, then we try to spend some time, like about one hour outside, to breathe some fresh air, uh, which is sometimes very stressful because very often we hear like explosions. Uh, we live uh, in Obolonia, and this is very close to the northwest of Kiev, where we have Bucha and the, the places where there were battles and fighting with Russians. And then the evening comes and we have perfume and we come back here to the shelter. This is the room where we sleep on the floor. So basically right now we are on the floor and uh, this is where we will be sleeping right now. And you're just yeah, describing all of these things that, that all of us take for granted, like getting fresh air or going to the grocery store. You know, it makes you think more about it. And of course, this is so difficult for anyone in your position, but with three kids and, and a little baby, how do you explain this to your children? Well, I tell, I'm telling them just uh, what it's happening clearly. I, like it, it's not a bad movie that you can turn off it's not some, something that I can hide from them. I just, they know that there is a war and uh, that's it. I explain them how to stay safe. Why is it so important, you know, to, to listen to me when we go outside because they, every time it's a real danger over the year. At the same time, I don't want them to feel too much stressed. So I try to feel strong myself 
Yes, and when they see me, how I behave, they like copy behavior of the of the of mother, and it looks like they are coping very well. Uh, once per several day, I have a Zoom meeting with a psychologist, uh, so they talk to a psychologist, and th that helps them a lot, I think. And they are just intelligent and good kids. They yes, are so they adorable know. kids. We've all enjoyed uh, watching them. Hello. <laughs> We've all enjoyed watching them. The, the baby is so adorable. Uh, do you ever consider leaving Ukraine? Um, we've been talking about this with my husband, obviously, and we are talking about this every day, and we are questioning ourselves, is it right that we are here? And uh, so far, we come to the conclusion, yes, this is the only possible decision for us. Simply for us, it's not possible to imagine living right now. Ukraine, Ukraine, uh, you know, Ukraine is not, you know, something uh, abstract. Ukraine, this is the territory and this is people. So I am one of those people. I am Ukraine. You know, if I leave, uh, there will be no Ukraine here anymore. You know, this is how we feel. It's like our responsibility. And yes, we do our best uh, in terms that we like to survive this war, but we stay where we think we, we are needed right now. So I have a feeling that I'm needed right now here in Kiev, and this is why I'm here with my children. Well, it's amazing. You're so brave and, and to be such a, a calm mother and, and such a good mother to your kids during this tough time is just incredible. And I know you were a professional tour guide before the war. I know I, I've talked to you before about this, that you took so much pride in your city. You knew about the history of all the landmarks and, and you shared that with other people from around the world. So that must really hit extra hard for you now to see it go away. It it hurts. It really hurts a lot to see how this is vandalism. This is so barbar barbaric what they are doing. You know, they are just just <laughs> destroy all our pride. I don't know. Our biggest airplane, Maria Dream, was you know just burned down. Uh, so many churches are already destroyed of the 18th, 19th century, and uh, today Lviv, uh, the cultural capital of Ukraine, was hit. Uh, it, it really hurts. I don't understand how is it possible to do this in the 21st century, to be so wild and barbaric, you know, just attack, just destroy, just ruined. It's not only about money, it's about our heritage, our our culture. But it looks like Putin just wants to, you know, make genocide in Ukraine. He just wants to, you know, level to the ground and just uh, destroy our identity. I don't know. It's attack on the normal, peaceful, civilized world, and this is why he needs to be. He needs to be stopped. I mean, immediately, right now. And we see it firsthand. Uh, all of you suffering through this, uh, and your young children, whose lives this is going to shape. Uh, Elena, thank you so much for taking the time for us. Stay safe. Thank you. I will try. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.